Mr. Watkins, Chaz, I don't believe this is really what you wanna do. I raised my eyebrows. And why doc? Well, I know it's natural to want revenge, but I also know it's a dangerous reaction that I guarantee will backfire on you. I slowly turned my head to the right to look at Amy who had her head down and seemed to be trying her best to appear insignificant to the current discussion. After looking at her for a few moments, I looked back at Dr. Kans and noticed her annoying attempt at a friendly smile. I also noticed the lack of rings on her left hand. She was an attractive woman closer to my age, but over the past few weeks, she had been testing my patience. Well doc, I yawned. I'm sure I don't know what you mean when you say this will work against me. I just can't imagine this as a possible outcome. Well, let's see. What Amy did was selfish and wrong. Revenge is also selfish and wrong, but it is also a purely malicious attack. Amy didn't attack you. Revenge would let Amy know that you are only interested in hurting her in turn, which means you have no love or care for her or the marriage. I think the fact that you're here means you care and sorry doc, you probably forgot. I filed for divorce, remember, I'm here because Old Faithful, a play on the name Loyal Old Man, the name of a geezer on the territory of Yellowstone National Park, they fought it and demanded consultations, and the court ruled it. Yes, however, we must work together to restore trust. And this will of course be more difficult if she loses trust in you. What if she decides that your attempt to hurt her is more than she can handle and decides to walk away from the marriage? I smiled at her. Would seem terribly hypocritical to me. What do you think, Amy? If I had an affair with someone else, or maybe four others, more than once, would you give up on our marriage? Mr. Watkins, the best revenge is to refuse to compromise your dignity or principles than to stoop to such a level and have an affair for revenge. Thank you, Doc. I understand you. But I didn't hear an answer to the question I asked my wife. Come on, Amy. Why don't you join the discussion? How do we fix our marriage if you refuse to answer the hard questions? If I went and slept with four other women multiple times each to even the score, would you consider us equal? Or would you think we were screwed? Amy grimaced. Mr. Watkins, I owe, for God's sake. Doc, call me Chaz. Chaz, this is counterproductive. And whether you decide to save your marriage or not, your self-esteem, self-respect, and happiness will remain with you. No one should be able to take that away from you. Don't descend into negative behavior that puts you on the same level as Amy's infidelity. Elevate and focus on your is possibly the best revenge you could ever get, and the only chance we'll be able to identify the problems in your marriage that caused Amy to cheat on you in the first place. Treason, I said quietly. Sorry, ask Dr. Kans, plural. She cheated on me several times with several men. But now, if you don't mind, I'd like to change the topic of discussion a little. Dr. Kans nodded. Amy was still trying to pretend this wasn't happening. Amy, I'll come back to my question later. You can take some time to think about your answer. So, Doc, you just said that I need to rise to the occasion and stay positive and focused so we can figure out what caused Amy to cheat. We need to determine what is wrong in our marriage that made her cheat on me with other men more than once. Right? That's right, Chaz. Once we identify these reasons, we can address them in a positive way and begin the process of healing and restoring your relationship. So you wanna say that it's my fault that she's an unfaithful wife that kind of language is counterproductive, Chaz. And, yes, to some extent, it's your fault. Women in happy fulfilling relationships simply don't commit adultery. I gave her my best incredulous look, which she ignored. It takes two people for a marriage to be strong and for neither partner to go astray. If we can identify these problems, we can deal with them and have a better chance of ensuring loyalty, trust and harmony. I was taken aback for a moment thinking about it and finally said quietly, I call it bullshit and shenanigans. Sorry, asked the embarrassed doctor, machinations doc, 
an insidious trick used specifically for a hidden purpose. I know what that word means, Chaz. I just don't understand why you think there's any shenanigans going on here. Yeah, first of all, my unfaithful wife, who claims to want to fix her marriage, a marriage she broke up, refuses to participate in this discussion. There are two people who are working on this marriage, but she's not one of them. For her dissolute behavior, Mr. Watkins, shut up doc. This is my money, and I will have my say if there were problems in our marriage, the appropriate response would be for my loving wife to tell me about them so we could work on them. Don't you agree? She nodded, looking a little embarrassed. So if she decided to take a proactive, healthy approach and discuss with me her problems and desire to resolve these issues in our marriage, and I ignored her or refused to acknowledge the problems, then I would be guilty and responsible for my contribution to the continuation of the problems in our marriage. Of course, but and if that was the case, then her reaction was to either accept it or not, and decide whether she wanted to leave the relationship or continue to try to make it work. She didn't. As far as I know, she was not unhappy. I'm no saint. But she never spoke to me about dissatisfaction with any aspect of our marriage that would justify her torpedoing the marriage. No doc. If she was unhappy or dissatisfied with our marriage, then her actions completely relieved me of that responsibility. She herself is to blame and your attempts to shift the blame onto me are shenanigans. And I will not accept them. Chaz, if you can't accept your share of responsibility, I guarantee your marriage won't survive this. I slowly stretched in my chair then stood up and headed towards the door. I think we're done. Dr. Kans, if you would like to continue helping us, please leave me a message before your next session explaining why I should bother. Our life together up to this point was unremarkable and ordinary. Amy and I have been married for 20 years. We met in college during our freshman year, but didn't start dating right away because at the time we met. We were both in serious relationships with others. However, during our freshman year, we ran into each author at a party and discovered that neither of us were in serious relationship, and we quickly began dating. After a few months of dating, I wanted to become exclusive, but Amy refused. I looked at her, thanked her for the past few months, and wished her a happy life. She was confused. Chaz, wait, what's happening? Are you saying that if I refuse exclusive relationship, then it's all over between us? Yes, Amy. That's right. I'm looking for a long-term partner, not a sex buddy that I have to share. If it's not you, then I wanna be free and look for others to find what I'm looking for. But you can date others, Chaz. I don't understand why we should stop dating just so you can date others. We have fun together and have great sex. I'm dating a few guys, and I still wanna spend time with you. You are free to do the same. And if you find someone special that you wanna have a serious relationship with, I will not stand in your way. I thought I already found her. Amy, I'm sorry I wasted your time in mine. Goodbye. I didn't date Amy again after that and spent the rest of my junior year dating others. Sometimes we bumped into each other at parties, but I never talked to her, much less called her. By my senior year, I was dating a beautiful Asian girl and was seriously considering marriage when she told me that she had been accepted into graduate school abroad and would be leaving within a week of graduation. She was so happy that I couldn't bring myself to tell her how I felt, so I swallowed my wounded pride and helped her celebrate. Gradually, I started to move away from her, but she didn't seem to notice. Or to be completely honest with myself, she didn't care. And a week after graduation, she left. I still occasionally receive letters from her, but that's where the affair ended. After graduating from university, I got a job at a large software development firm and started my career. I was making great money, and after two years, I was offered to join the sales team. Started working in the development department, but they quickly discovered that I was one of the few developers they could trust to work with clients. And I quickly became the implementation project manager and pre-sales assistant for our account managers whose technical and at the same time personal assistance was required. Ultimately. The VP of sales decided that I would probably succeed in sales, and she was right. In my first year in sales, I met a 121% of my quota, which allowed me to generate serious tax income.
I was happy at my job owned a nice upscale apartment, drove a new car, and generally lived the life of a single man with no commitments. I dated had sex and was unhappy. I wanted a relationship, someone to share my success and life with. After two successful years in sales, I met Amy again by chance. She worked as a junior purchasing agent for the company I was presenting to and was included on the team evaluating our solution and proposal. Long story short, we started dating, and it seemed Amy was ready for commitment this time and wanted an exclusive relationship. She seemed to have changed and the chemistry was still there, so I agreed. And 18 months later we got married. Two years later, Amy gave birth to our son, Peter, but, unfortunately, she was told that another child was not wanted. We were devastated, but we were happy that we at least had Pete and decided to move on with our lives. I had a vasectomy and we moved on cherishing our marriage, each other, our son, and our careers. After Pete left for college, Amy and I started having some friction. She was taciturn with me and seemed inclined to be where I was not. Our once vibrant sex life had dwindled to almost nothing, and I began to wonder about Amy. She worked a lot and was not at all kind to me. I've never ignored problems. So I hired a private investigator to find out what was going on. What happened led us to this point. Mr. Watkins, this is Dr. Kahn's. I think I understand your disappointment after our last session and want to assure you that I'm ready to help you and Amy. And I truly do not hold you responsible for her decisions and actions. I believe that in yours. There were bound to be cracks in the marriage but I recognize that you are right. When you say that how Amy chose to handle this is our main concern, please understand that I want you both to be stronger when this is all over. I want you to heal from the pain she has caused you and for me to help you both cope with your new reality. Whatever it is, please don't give up on me, Amy, or your marriage. I sincerely hope that we will see you tomorrow at our session. I really wanted an answer to my question. And since Amy was currently staying with a friend and we weren't talking, I thought, what the hell? I'll give Doc another chance. Additionally, I could be held in contempt of court if I refused to participate, in which case I would have to start the sessions all over again. Have you two been intimate since this all started? I stared at Amy who never seemed to leave her chair or position since our last session. I waited a moment before answering, no doc, we didn't have any intimacy, still looking at Amy, who stubbornly refused to look at me or the consultant, and why, Chaz, doc, do you mind if I take a break for a second and address Amy directly, she looked wary, but agreed, Amy, are you here to participate or not, it seems like I'm doing all the hard work here, and as as I know, I'm not the one who lied and cheated, I didn't want this. You did it. You either step forward or I'll end this right now. I, uh, yes. I that is sorry. I'll try to be more yes. I will participate. Okay, great. The doc wants to know why we are not having sex. Why don't you answer this question? And then I'll clarify everything you need. Certainly. Sorry. Well, Chaz won't talk to me. And I'm staying with a friend at the moment so we don't have any options and stand, stand, stand. And I ask. And and I wasn't tested for diseases. Stand, stand, stand. And I asked again. And, well, Has says intimacy isn't something he's comfortable with at the moment. This is not exactly what I said, but it is, of course, less colorful, dark. Do you have any idea how many times over the years I've had the opportunity? to have extramarital sex. Oh, no, how can I? But I can assume that you had more than enough opportunities. You are a very attractive fit, successful man, so I can assume that there were plenty of such opportunities. I winked at her, and she blushed slightly. Damn right, and they continue to be, a uh, plentiful. I have a problem here, doc. You see, if we leave aside the absolute dishonesty and Amy's selfishness, and what it did to my love and attraction for her, I can't be intimate with her for three reasons. First, I never want to be perceived as agreeing with her behavior. If I had become intimate with her before we consummated our marriage, I would feel like I was accepting her infidelity, which I am not. 
Secondly, I refuse to put my health at risk. I have no idea if she has sexually transmitted diseases. At the same time, I chuckled. Finally, I need to balance the scales. Until now, I have refused everyone who came if you'll pardon the pun. I believed in the vow we made and respected and loved my wife enough that I didn't want to hurt her or jeopardize her health or our relationship. But now it looks like she's taken the opportunity to try out five different ones several times each. And for me to feel like the scales are balanced, I need to have the same opportunity to see what other women have to offer me. This isn't about revenge doc, it's just a happy byproduct. No, it's about equality, fairness, and balance. Wouldn't you say that these are important factors in fixing our marriage? Amy trembled, and Dr. Khan's chewed the inside of her cheek contemplating her answer. 5. She whispered. I began to become impatient with this couple. Doc, how many more sessions has the court ordered us? She looked at me quickly contemplating changing the subject. Well, let's see. The court ordered four more sessions, Chaz. Fine, let me ask you. Do you think we can fix anything enough for me to consider withdrawing my divorce petition within the next four sessions? Amy sighed. I turned to look at her. Amy, I'm going to be as honest with you as possible. The only hope and let me be clear. I'm not saying I guarantee anything, but the only hope for me to give up the divorce is if I feel like the balance is back. Mr. Watkins, I thought I explained how devastating this would be. We have four sessions left, and I think thank you doc. I am aware of your thoughts on this issue. Amy, I'll repeat my question from last week. If I feel like the only way for us to consider staying married is to tip the scales and have me sleep with five different women multiple times, what would you do? Will you feel that you can no longer stay married to me and allow the divorce to happen, or will you accept it? No answer. Just sobs. After a few awkward moments, I tuned into Dr. Khan's. When we first came into this office a few sessions ago, Dr. Khan's, what did you think was most important for successful counseling? Honesty, you both need to be completely honest with me and each other if we wanna get anywhere. And what do you think Beverly was I honest with you? Her eyes widened a little at my calling her name. Yes. I can say that I feel like you were completely honest with me. Chaz, thank you. And can you say you feel the same way about all faithful? She looked thoughtfully at Amy who looked slightly less comfortable. Honestly, I don't think I can answer this question. She Amy, you didn't talk very much during these sessions. And as I think about it, I have to wonder yes, me too. Would you be surprised to learn that Amy is still cheating on me, Beverly? that the friend she lives with is her new lover. Amy huddled in the chair and began to sob quietly. Dr. Khan's looked upset. What are the minimum requirements to complete the remaining sessions to the satisfaction of the court? Beverly, Beverly. Yes, sorry, what, uh, well, yes. I can go to court at any time if I feel that there is no point in continuing the sessions. And what do you recommend? Bev, I smiled. She studied my face carefully for a moment, and then a small, sincere smile began to spread across her face. Looking me straight in the eye, she replied, I will immediately inform the court that I recommend stopping the sessions and granting you a divorce. Amy began to shake and sob. Thank you, Bev. I extended my hand and asked will you call me when our case is closed. I wish you were my first. Her eyes sparkled as Amy fainted. Count on it. Cheers. Subscribe to our channel so that your second half doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to.